Well, welcome everyone to the Town of Arlington Redevelopment Board meeting uh, on May 15th, 2023. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, let's see, so we'll just do quick introductions of all of the members of the board. I'm Rachel Zemberry, uh, Chair of the Board. Hello. Eugene Benson. Steve Rebelak. And uh, we have Claire Ricker, the uh, Director of the Department of Planning and Community Development joining us this evening. So thank you all for joining us. Uh, we have uh, one primary <laughs> agenda item, um, and then we'll um, chat with our guest, I think, during during new business. Um, I'm, I'm so sorry. We have another <laughs> member of the Department of Planning and Community Development okay. joining us this evening. If you could introduce yourself, of course. Marisa Lau, Senior Planner. Great. Thank you so much, Marisa, for joining us. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's jump right in uh, because I know we have a limited time this evening. We will be adjourning around 7.45, 7.50 to town meeting. Uh, so uh, we are uh, meeting this evening to uh, discuss an update on the MBTA communities planning process. And our understanding is that uh, the consultant hired by the town has come back with their preliminary draft uh, report and recommendations, which Claire is going to uh, take us through. That's correct. Thank you very much. So these are um, draft versions. Um, I'm trying to, in fact, they're so draft that I only have them in the um, design software um, of the um, MBTA communities district. Now this was, these were districts were drawn based on um, the community survey as well as the work that UTIL has done um, to uh, calculate the exact number of acres, units, et cetera, that will make us compliant, that would be a compliant district. There are two drawings here, both comply. This one, I think, interestingly, and something that we should point out is one of the requirements for the MBTA communities is that we have half of it be contiguous. So this gets us there mostly um, because of you know, this identification um, in East Arlington. Um, and you can see here, not a lot of um, zoning involved in the center, although they're calling it an Arlington um, center zone. Um, so this is a compliant district. Um, that's the orange. That's, so this is the orange, it's both. So what do you mean by you say compliant? This is where one would rezone mm -hmm. this yep. to what? This uh, this would get us um, three families across the entire thing. Yeah, all, all the orange. This is all and, the orange and, and the, the blue. blue. Now, it obviously doesn't have to be three families across the entire thing. We could think about where does a six family go? Mm -hmm. And that gets us an affordable unit. Where would we want to have three families? But right now, this drawing represents three families, um, a density of roughly three families across this entire, you know, these properties, the blue, and the orange are both included. Now, it excluded existing B districts, excluded existing I districts, obviously open space. Um, I don't think anybody wanted to build an open space, so that's, that's right. you know, good. Right. Um, but this is sort of the initial, um, the initial district that was drawn um, based on really the survey and where um, in Arlington, um, it would, you know, it makes the most sense residential, et cetera, where we yeah. could add some density. Claire, is this, Either or both. Do, do both have to be both. done to meet the requirements? There's version two. Okay. Version two, interestingly, does not Thank meet you. the requirements because we don't have half of the district that is contiguous um, at representing 50% of the district. So this is, you can see, smaller here in East Arlington, mm -hmm. a little bit bigger um, in the heights, and then we add the center. Okay. And, and everything is set oh. back off of Mass Ave, correct? Everything is mm -hmm. off of Mass Ave. Great. You can see, well, I don't know if you could see, I, I did this on purpose because I didn't want to bridge anything, but we do come um, a couple parcels back from um, from the commercial areas. Mm -hmm. But this doesn't meet it because? We do not have 50% of the district as contiguous. What the rule is five contiguous Camera one. This gets us there. I think mostly because of the um, the amount that we have there, mm -hmm. and this is you know great. Um, but this is pretty clearly, at least 
to me. And I'd be interested to hear what the board has to say. Um, it's spread out a little more, um, maybe a little more fairly across neighborhoods. I think that was something that came out of um, the survey. The thing about this one is that it would require some tweaking, mm -hmm. um, I think, to get a, to get you know that 50%. Um, How much tweaking do you know? Like I think this is going to have to be figured out in the in the working group. Mm -hmm. And honestly, it's a design question. And it's just two versions right now, right? Mm -hmm. There's only two versions. Okay. Can is it possible to zoom in? Yep. At all. So, how much frontage on Mass Ave is there in that option? There's a significant amount, correct? Well, there's. Um, you can see some of these larger parcels here, which mm -hmm. I think I'm not sure if these are already being developed or not. But the, here on Mass Ave, we're retaining. Um, you know, the, the these are larger parcels which were included. Um, but you can see the setback on the smaller. Um, some of these smaller mm -hmm. ones. Um. And then up here as well as we get closer to Broadway. Um, and then here in East Arlington, or excuse me, in Arlington Heights, mostly set back from Mass Ave. Mm -hmm. So that big, blue, sorry, that big blue spot is the lumber yard? It is. Okay. Now, that, now we have arrows way here. Yeah. Is this lumber? I think this is lumber. Arlington Coal and Lumber. Yeah. No, that's no. that's all the way over in the. Yeah, that's the, that that's the blue spot there, right? No. 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 Park, Park Ave is way to the left. Uh, there's it's not. It's not. Park so Ave. Not any. Okay. It's currently zoned business is not included. Okay. On, on either. On either. either. On on both. Either or. Either. Yeah, we avoided all anything uh, zone B one now or B B's now, um, and focused on anything. Um, currently zoned residential. And this is, I think, a really interesting question about, you know, putting this here makes us compliant, but when we start to stretch it out a little bit, we're less compliant. Um, however, it's a better plan. Um, and it does more than the bare minimum if you throw in the Arlington Center. I sort of like number two, but with replacing that East Arlington district with the East Arlington district from version one. Oh, sweet. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Throws down the gauntlet. Okay. Um, and like I said, these are. Can you talk about why? Part of it is. I, th I like having, or there, there's sort of two reasons. One is this is is I think um, gives a little more to Broadway and mm -hmm. Broadway Plaza um, in terms of you know providing a source of foot traffic for there. This is already one of the more walkable points. Uh, can you flip over to number two? This is it's focused more on Mass. It it is it, it does give a good focus to Mass Ave, mm. but um, you know it just it seems like it's smushed up way again, way on the outskirts. Now, I, I'd like something a little closer to the center. That that that's my high level thinking. I no. go ahead. No, go ahead. I think there were some questions that came out in the in the public meetings, or at least some comments that I thought were really interesting. This one really is transit oriented as we're, you know, getting real getting, you know, really getting really close there also means we're getting close, you know, to mm -hmm. Alewife. Mm -hmm. Um so I think, you know, that was some of the thinking there. Let's group it around transit as much mm -hmm. as we can. Um, I. When you go to the top, oops, it's a little more, a little less transit oriented, mm -hmm. a little okay. more into the existing residential, mm -hmm. um, but still I'm compliant. Not, you know. Gina, you uh, can I? I, I yeah. don't want to interrupt you. No, you go first. Tom. Uh, Putting the thoughts I, together. Thanks. Uh, I I like version one better. It puts less of a burden on East Arlington, which is quite dense already, mm -hmm. and it's starting to build up a uh, a downtown where you have a walking district, and that will support the businesses more. Yeah. Uh, I like that Pretty much, strange. much more. Uh, as far as 
I, I know Steve's point about uh, being near transit, and I, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. But I, I think if we have that there like that, I think the bus routes will come. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I don't think we have to solely focus on what's existing right now, because mm -hmm. these changes are going to be long term changes. It's not going to happen overnight. All of a sudden, those orange blocks can be all built up. It's going to develop over time. Mm -hmm. And as I think that <clears throat> as things develop, the MBTA will, uh, accust will, will change for that, I'm hoping. You know, they're not going to say, oh, well, you know, Right now, they're changing their schedules and their buses because of what people use mm -hmm. the buses for. If they find that there's a heavier traffic, they might increase bus service. They might. So I don't want to solely rely on this MBTA and we have to follow them. I, I, I'd much rather us lead them saying, hey, this is better for the town. We, we, uh, if we start encouraging development here that would focus on business and developing right along Mass Ave, I think that's a good win, and then the bus routes will follow, and the mm -hmm. transit will follow. That's my thought. I, I, I have a couple of substantive thoughts and a couple of procedural things. On the substantive thoughts, I agree with Ken about this district because there will be, there are, and even if the MBTA does its, you know, alleged bus improvement process, There'll be buses going down Mass Ave there, one going, you know, into Harvard Square down Mass Ave, and the other um, going Mass Ave to El Park Parkway, and then down El Park Parkway to El Life when they remove the 67 bus. Um, so I think it will remain good for transit for that sort of reason. Um, I like in both of them that we're not losing any business mm -hmm. parcels. I think that's one thing that we as a board talked about, making sure we didn't lose any business parcels. So I think that's good also. Um, I'm a, a little bit concerned with the other one because it's right next to how I've struck and the potential flooding, either now or, you know, as the as climate gets worse. Yeah. So I think if we want to do something for a little bit more sustainability, this may be a better place than smack up against the brook for that reason also. Um, I, you know, even the ones up in in the heights or not quite the heights. The little, blues. Pardon? The blues. The blues. Yeah, there's still going to be the 77 bus. Mm -hmm. um, Going, going that way. So we don't know what the individual parcels are. This one also has an East Arlington zone that um, works with the bikeway. The other one is off um, mm -hmm. the bikeway a little bit. Now, again, mm -hmm. very, very fuzzy. It's the starting point. Mm -hmm. So we could come up with a district and prioritize, hey, we should have it touch the bikeway. I mean, this is something we've decided. Pretty close. But then if, you're on, if you're on a bike and you're two blocks away from the bikeway, it's fine, you know. I live farther from the bikeway than that, but you know, once you're on your bike, it's not a big deal. Um, I just wonder, other than if you walk into L Life, then it's helpful mm -hmm. yeah. to, to be right on the bikeway. Um, on a on a on a process side, I think it would be interesting, you know, after the committee looks at this tomorrow, to figure out how to present both of these options to the community for community input and to um, somehow inform all the people whose properties might be affected by both of these proposals, that these are two options that we're looking at. And for the second one, that's not quite up to snuff, figure out what needs to be done to it. So we have to viable projects as opposed to one viable and one well, doesn't quite meet the rules. I, you know, I think this is, a, again, I think this is a starting place yeah. for discussion. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, if I, I, um, it's, I like counting, I like, I do like including some of Arlington Center because quite honestly, it has the largest pieces of property on it. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, you know, and more likely to be able to turn 
oh, God, I can't believe I'm going to say this, you know, a house on Jason Street and a four family, um, mm -hmm. you know, then you would leaving it a single family. I mean, I think there's good opportunity there for, you know, uh, you know, uh, units quickly. Well, I mean, there's no because reason why you couldn't include that in exactly. number one. Right? Exactly. That's, that's the whole mix right. and match. I exactly. Mean, so. You could absolutely do mix and match. You know, this is just really a question of um, a, a starting place that encompasses what we heard from the community in the survey. Yeah. Well, I'd like to just go ahead and finish. Me. So, my biggest concern with, I, I prefer option one as well, but my biggest concern with it is that um, we have talked about the importance of rezoning as many parcels as we can that are currently, we're currently, that were down zoned mm -hmm. to residential mm -hmm. on Mass Ave mm -hmm. and to a certain, to a lesser extent on Broadway, back to business districts. Yep. By including many of these which are in this plan we lose that opportunity because those that are are zoned for residential on mass ave both in um this section that straddles east arlington and arlington center yeah. and then in the heights um would become part of this this district and that's a concern for me because i think it's directly at odds with the um the vision that this board had, which is to really make Mass Ave, you know, eventually a much more continuous commercial um, commercial district. You know, if you move over, if you go towards the blue in the Heights, for example, mm -hmm. in the overlay district that we are proposing, all of those right there, for example, we were proposing to rezone as right. part of a, a future Arlington Heights business district. Right. It does not mean that those people that live there in their homes cannot continue to operate as residential, but there is an opportunity in the future as those turn over yep. for those, um, I think, very valuable parcels to be used in a way that contributes uh, in a much greater way to the town and unites the piecemeal yep. The business district that we're currently dealing with in the Heights. So I, I, I agree with a lot of this, but I would like to massage it to eliminate a lot of these residential parcels that blank mass app personally. So bring them into the zone. No, no, remove no, no. them. I, yes. Bring uh, some if you go back to the yellow area there, what, what Rachel was talking about, swing to the left. I think see those blue uh, things right there that looks like already they're, they're all, <laughs> that's why they say that's why they colored it blue saying they're already no, there's very look yeah, yeah. it's an easy change yeah but I, I agree with rachel that maybe we should uh just pull up our skirt a little bit and just leave the edges along mass mm -hmm. ave stays business and that's how, that's that's a further rezoning later on and just move up the hill or down uh down on bow street or anywhere around there uh, to increase that because right around that area there it, it's already pretty dense already mm -hmm. uh, with and in putting uh, a, a little more dense housing there it might be okay there's a lot of nice parks there uh you know it's uh, treat treat uh treat some of this as as if it were business yes and pull it back so we would extend the pink maybe here obviously along here and here yeah. and then mm -hmm. You know, pick up something. I don't. I'm just total guessing. You know, here or here or something like that. Un unless there is an opportunity, again, working within the what I think is a flawed part of the MBTA yeah. community. Yes. Requirement. Only one. One of the flaws of the <laughs> MBTA, which does not, which is silent on mixed use. Yes. Um, to indicate, for example, that um, you know, if three family parcels. You know, it it is three family, for example, as of right, or mixed use. Again, right. I don't know what we can. I think that we're going to need some technical guidance from you, Claire, on in terms of what is the or that we might be able to incentivize 
people, if we do need to include any of those parcels along Mass Ave, I would want to do so um, worded in such a way that there is a much um, more attractive alternative mm -hmm. that does include a commercial space. So again, the, the other part of this is that you asked me in the beginning, what does this look like? This is three families completely across the zone. That doesn't mean that we couldn't remove, say, I don't know, these right here mm -hmm. and then up zone this parcel mm -hmm. to be, ten, right. you know, 10 units or something like mm -hmm. that. Um, you know, there's still a lot to play with here. Um, but this is really just the initial initial take uh, from the uh, from the consultant. So I, I, I mean, what you're saying is what we have all yes. talked about on this board for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I agree with it. But I want to sort of think about another counterpoint sure. for it, which is the parcels along Mass Ave that are right now residential would be up zone to allow six units buildings, but but also at the same time we do that for imputate communities, we could also change the underlying zoning to business and incentivize mixed use. So we could, I think, do both. I think we're saying time. the same thing. It's right. like creating right. a, right. an attractive alternative. Right. 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 Yeah. But we'd have mixed use as an attractive mm -hmm. alternative. But if somebody doesn't want to use it, at least we're going to get six family, which I think is better than the threes that are there now in terms of, you know, um, activation of the street and people who are going to use the businesses and things like that. So I think that's the other way to think about combining them yeah. in some way. Yeah. Well, this is all based on three families, right? So you, you say the original one doesn't comply uh, strictly right now, but what if we upzone some of that area there? The orange where maybe around Broadway it becomes right. uh, six families or right. maybe eight families. Right. Boy, uh, version one is compliant, right? Version two. Version is one two. complies oh, because sorry. of the but, fifty percent rule. But we're, we're up zoning, so maybe we can get higher density. Right. So we we can then use our inclusionary right. to mm -hmm. get to them affordable it's, it's, housing. It's, right. So right. I think the six is is a magic number that we want to. Sort of keep in the back of our mind, not, even though it's not a requirement of MBTA communities. But if we sort of say, you know, at the at the, at the center of those that orange area, it may be six or uh, or more or more. Yeah. You know, you know that magic number of twenty four yeah. is the most optimal yeah. Um, yeah. density. That's right. I'd be inclined to agree, but leave those on on Mass Ave and Broadway and not. And not move them onto the side streets and keep the sides as three because I think that's more consistent with sort of how the town's operating now. Mm -hmm. So we could up to six with, you know, a mixed use base zoning for those on Mesa Broadway and, um, but keep threes on the side streets going back. Now, it's all the details right it now. It is all in the detail. Yeah, well. And and I mean we still haven't talked about height and lot sizes Correct. and yeah. all those other cute things. It's a good start. Yeah. Now one of the things that Lexington did, um, a fair number of their districts were in areas that are currently occupied by small businesses, and they they were concerned about losing commercial. And one of the, so what they did was, you know, they allowed mixed use, but if you did. Basically, if you're doing like residential, you could do three stories. Mm -hmm. If you're going to do do ground floor commercial, you get an extra two stories. That's right. That's See, exactly the. See, but I would only do that in our residential, and not our business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Correct. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. No, exactly what I was suggesting. They added two floors, not one. Two. Good for them. So there becomes an incentive for you know, and quite frankly, it's something that's going to pencil out a lot. Right, easier oh, for yeah. a developer. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, and that that was a reason for two stories is to to you know ensure that it had a better chance of penciling out. Right. So it's for for sure food for thought. I think you know the the are, is anyone surprised at the zone? No. Did you think it would be bigger, smaller? No. 
I think it's realistic for the town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. For, for number two, I would like to see the floodplain drawn out. Okay. Um, I know with, you know, I live, is, yeah. I live over here and yeah. I know that a, you know, Cambridge's model of a 2070s uh, sea level rise storm surge will put about this much above my first floor. Yep. And, you know, this area is, this area is a lower elevation. So I, I think, you know, or, you know, in the future, this, this part of town is going to get really clocked. Um, <laughs> I, there's, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's more at risk than, you know, areas over here. Be, although it is relatively flat, there is a grading breeze. And, you, you know, and we can't use the floodplain because that's past. We right. have to do, you know, projected from yeah, 50 or 2070. And if it was going to go there, one of the things that we talked about at the zoning bylaw working group, but it sort of stalled, was allowing people to build up over the flood elevation sure. with extra heights. If we went with number two, I think we'd have to figure out mm -hmm. what to do about that too. Um, there's uh, there's another piece of this, and it's something that Kelly was working on before she left, and I'm going to pick back up, which is an infrastructure impact fee. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times you can really leverage new development to fix problems, mm -hmm. which could be uh, attractive here, you know, doing some kind of um could you know contribution to uh stormwater impact or or you know something like that in fact i'm i'm pretty seriously going to pursue that with mike rottenmacher mm -hmm. um this opportunity that we may have to push the private side to do that kind of infrastructure work that we need anyway a lot of towns have i and i exactly yes you know well we write ours we could write ours down <laughs> okay yeah this no, it's it's come up in 40B hearings where yep. um, where a um, you know the Z, when I was on the ZBA we had to wave I and I because they weren't written down and uh, they're not written down you can't say what it is we need to write that down <laughs> <laughs> um, I think you know it's it's pretty clear I, I, this this seemed a little like I, I was surprised at its size when I saw it I thought it was oh wow that's not as as big or as impactful as I necessarily thought it would be mm -hmm. but it does make me think a lot about mitigation and especially related to the infrastructure um, and I, you know I was also thinking about you know potentially some impacts to open space but this mm -hmm. isn't I just this doesn't seem as um, uh, as large, I mm -hmm. think, as I as I thought it was going to turn out to be. And it's but not, yeah, neither of them is a really large percentage Meaning. of the area of the no. town, which is, I think, helpful. Um, yeah, I'm still puzzled. I'm still thinking about Warren Street. I would not have expected it there, but here. Uh, no, 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 the other one. Uh, oh. This little, yeah, this is I mean, there is a business district right here. It's yeah. a tiny one. Right. <laughs> but um, I think they picked this up um, maybe because of parcel size, maybe because of the, the lack of zoned, you know, business mm. necessarily. Uh, Sorry, will this be uh, handing out some sort of uh, PDF, something for uh, tomorrow's meeting? So, yes. Um, it will be on paper for tomorrow's meeting. I was going to try to have it on paper for you all tonight. I couldn't get it on paper, so I figured showing it was That's just fine. as good. That's fine. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, the way that the the public meeting, this will go in front of the working group tomorrow night. We will probably have these same conversations mm -hmm. about, you know, oh well, let's take you know, how could we potentially tweak this? You know, where's a denser parcel? You know, we don't want these parcels. You know, what would something like that look like? And talk about the best way to sort of work with the public on this as well. But the public meeting that we have scoped out for June eighth is going to be maps and pens and you know, please, if if not this, what? Um, and of course, remain as open as we can to it. Mm -hmm. I think that there's a an, an interesting, you know, to just look at this and say it's three family across all zones. I'm I'm looking forward to a conversation about where more dense than that where do we get where can we pick up more affordable housing um because we all know this isn't necessarily about affordable housing but it should mm. be um and so we should at least think of a couple of ways to um just by virtue of by right um 12 units gets its two have they um done any um like graphics like three-dimensional graphics saying this is a sketch up block model of what a Three family looks like. Not yet. 
as opposed to a six family, because I think that is really crucial for people to visualize what the impact may be mm -hmm. as far as a six family right. block of housing versus a three family block of housing. And then what you have is two family block mm -hmm. and get that comparison. Otherwise, I think people are going to just realize yeah. they're going to go schizoid right. and say, hey, uh, we, we got we're building canyons again, you know. And it really depends on the lot size. Correct. In yeah. that in that yeah. case. And so I think this is this will be the more of the conversation that we have right. tomorrow night about how do we, you know, how do we achieve this? Because we may end up shrinking the overall, you know, spread of it, mm -hmm. but you know, densifying, you know, mm -hmm. you know, intensifying the density on some of these parcels. Well, right? so I mean Mass Ave is the place in town a little bit on other streets that already have larger apartment buildings mm -hmm. on them. So it's mm -hmm. not that's where it's a good comparison. Right, right. Language. It's not far right. into that place as if we put it in some other part. And we already have that SketchUp model. Yes. Of Mass Ave <laughs> that we can SketchUp plot model. these things there and you can you can fly up and see how it how this proposal changes that Mass Ave massing model we have. Well, the um, one of the I think some somewhere on the side there was a little histogram of lot sizes. There was. Um, and given you know given the number that are median you know give. Given the number around the median of 5,000 ish square feet, um, you know, three family is probably is probably a good fit for that. Yeah. So that might be something that's an interesting part of this when it's presented for the June 8th meeting mm -hmm. is really helping people understand what um, appropriate size and, mm -hmm. and, and scale of development is per parcel size. I mean, what options are? I mean, the interesting thing about including some bits of Arlington Center is that we end up with much larger parcels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that one before. Uh, you know, I, it's, Which parcel is that? Again, they're all oh, this one. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, could consider removing parcels greater than 15,000 square feet. Well, that's a thought that we can share, that Rahi can share with us tomorrow night and we can talk about. Oh, it's a third of the Well, the, the yeah. other thing is, it, it, I mean, those parcels are in set in stone for forever. Somebody might be right. contiguous parcels and combine them. So, right. right, 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 right. Um, okay. Yeah, anything else? I mean, that you'd like us to focus on with the working group? I think just for the working group to figure out how to present this mm -hmm. to the public. Mm -hmm. And not and you know, Steve and I were on a talk the other day with a couple of folks from the Lexington planning board. And one of the things that I found real interesting is that they notified by postcard everybody who owned a parcel that might get rezoned. So there were no surprises coming mm -hmm. about that at all. At this at people, early at, stage, not at this early, yeah, right, 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 but right. at some point, yeah. I think that would be something. When we get good. something, I think I think this is just the beginning. I okay. mean, this is the we tried as a working group to, in our first couple of meetings, put something down on a map, and we're so just flummoxed by the prospect and trying to decide what mm -hmm. goals were and the vision. Um, you know, yes, we had the consultant work on this and work with our our survey to get us there. But again, we can still um, just start to play with it now. Mm -hmm. I wanted to also let you guys know we had Util on, um, and they were doing uh, Mount. Uh, excuse me, Mass Housing Partnership was paying for them to give us the technical assistance that brought us here. Um, I have been speaking with Jim Feeney. We're going to keep Util on. Okay. Um, so we can get your drawings and you know, you. and so we can have, you know, some of these wonderful graphics that we used to be able to in house and do in house. Um, you know, we'll we'll certainly carry on with that. Um, God knows I have enough in the personal budget. So <laughs> that's not funny. <laughs> it's not, <laughs> it's not funny. So uh, so we do, we do have funding. Yes, we do. Thank you. We do have funding related to keeping UTL on to help us work through, you know, graphic visualization. Yeah, the visualization. Great. Graphic Thank representation you. That's, of the work. That's it. We need that 100%. You didn't want to do it for us, Kim? No? I can't even finish my own kitchen. <laughs> um, okay. So that concludes um, that right. presentation.
good step in the right direction. Yeah, I think it's, I, it, yeah, I think it's a good first step. And I think, you know, it's easily kind of digestible to say, if we allowed three families across the board, this is what we do. Now let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about what we need. Mm -hmm. Great. All right, thank you. And that is agenda item number one. Um, agenda item number two is new business. So um, I'd love to be look forward just a little bit sure. at our coming meetings and make sure that we're aligned on what's coming up. And then I'd love our guest an opportunity to ask any questions you might have about. Sure. And tell him about us about himself. Yes, then yeah. yeah. let us know a little bit about you as well. So maybe let's first look forward a bit. Um, so we have uh the 20s right 23rd out. May, yes 22nd 22nd of may i don't know that we have do we have anything on the agenda for that evening i'm not sure when the third dispensary is coming in front of us i think that's june correct it's june so that's june okay that's been calyx peak Right. So I don't know that we have anything currently on the agenda for the 22nd. OK, that's the last one, right? What's that? Yes, there's yes, this is the third of yeah. three. OK, so um, something the, the board had asked for was an update on Atwood House. Well, yes. all, all the projects I thought I asked. All the projects. Well, second I, I how about as many as i can fit <laughs> right. but i think we had talked with mike champa for example was going oh, yeah, yeah. to come meet with us in doug heim also right. about the atwood house um we may do an executive session around the atwood house um to talk about uh options for how to move that project forward that may involve the town um so i think that they both thought that let them get through let, let them get the meeting into June. So I think if we're able to find a June meeting yeah. that works for Doug and Mike, that um to Kim's point, let's get an update on many of the projects that have been approved and are sitting without moving forward. Correct. And then I think a specific discussion around the Atwood House would be appropriate since yes. um, that is a unique circumstance. I didn't ask for it today. I know how busy you are. Yeah. We're <laughs> so no, no, on any of the stuff. The, the update, <laughs> you know, the hotel this, and all yes. the other. Okay, yeah. just, just, just let us know when you're ready. Sure, yeah, that, okay? sure. So either of the two meetings in June, I think, are fine for, yes. for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, is is the board, um, how would you like to handle the Juneteenth holiday? Because what? I think right I think now, we had I thought we had scheduled around that. Did we not? It's a new holiday. Yes. It's it? the 19th. It's the 19th. Yeah. And so we're going to do it on... I think we're scheduled for the 5th and the 26th, Got if it. I'm Thank you. specifically mm -hmm. to, um, oh, no, I don't have that one on me. You know what? I don't know that we scheduled past okay. the 5th. No, that we had one on the 19th. We had the one on the 19th. Yeah. Oh, I just didn't put on my calendar because it's the holiday. So I think yeah. we, did, so <laughs> so we should move to the 26th. To the 26th. Yeah. yeah. Let's do that. That yeah, sounds great. Thank because you. then we're going to miss. You know, I don't know that we have the third, or I don't think we scheduled into July, did we? Not did we do the full no. year? I think we just did through June. Yeah. Next meeting, can we schedule the rest of the year? Yes. Right. So that's the question is, should we meet next week? I don't know that we have anything on our agenda, which really compels us to need to do that. Okay. Can I just Please. ask where we are on the MOUs on the three properties? That's, you know what? I owe you guys an update on that. Yes. So is that for next week or should we? Well, I mean, I feel like they're just it's with Doug with and so we we'll is to do that to right. Yeah. So in June we'll have the MOUs. Maybe they'll be done with town meeting in June. <laughs> this 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 may be the last. <laughs> we session. might get through. No, I don't think maybe don't this think week. I think this is my last one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I doubt it, June. Oh. I really doubt uh, today, Gene. You might really... too, but you know. Okay. In any case. <laughs> Um, if we cancel the 22nd, um, we'll have the 5th and the 26th in June. And we'll do in June the MOU, the update on existing um, uh, ARB yeah, projects, approved projects. And we'll have the discussion on the Atwood House, and yeah. we'll also have the third dispensary. 
Marisa. About the agriculture was going to be an executive session. Marisa, yes. The signs in Arlington yes. okay. yeah, Heights. Is she going to come back or we don't know yet? I don't know yet. Okay. No applications yet. The other, we're, we're behind on minutes, so. We've been using a transcription service for minutes and we'll probably continue to do it. I can have someone check in and see where we are with that, but it's just, you know, it's and try to record it, send it off to Cambridge, or not to Cambridge, but to, to, to the consultants in Cambridge. Yeah. <laughs> and then they do the minutes. Okay. And then I think in June, we also should review again the articles that we had originally planned. Yes. For. So I, I think we, if we could do that at the first meeting in June, um, because we really need to plan out community engagement okay. and, okay. Yeah. and ensure yeah. that those are still the articles we want to move forward for fall town meeting, yep. knowing how much we're going to be putting into MBTA communities. And we did talk we have nine of them. We did talk about maybe trying to pare that down a little bit and prioritize it, right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Right. So I think that's a good um, agenda item for June as well. Great. Anything else? Just the schedule for the next half of the year. Yes, and we'll review that. Um, maybe the first meeting in June, we'll review the schedule for the second half of the year. Yes, including the retreat. Yes. We'll start thinking about them. Thanks for that. Great. Sure. Okay. Montreal. <laughs> in. <laughs> well, at some point when you get caught up, I know that my term ends in September. I think mine ends in June. June. Yeah, but I, I don't know with... I, I don't know how the process works for. Oh, yours is different. I, yeah. yeah, I'm different. You're, you're the longer you're the, with the governor. Yeah, the editorial, right? All right. And I can look into that too. Look through the files and see how we do that. Doug can, I think, work with you on that because I think Doug worked with you on the appointment, correct? Uh, no, Jenny? that was mostly Jenny. It was mostly Jenny. Okay. All right. Yours is simple. What's that? Yours is simple. Yeah, I just have to go in front of the select board again, I think. No, well, you don't actually no. have you don't have to go. They just Here's last time, I thought. The first time. You're invited. You're, my, you're, you're invited, but you don't have to attend. Okay. Because I didn't bad attend. Night. It was a bad night. I think it was the same night as the AOB meeting. So that you Yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I forgot about that. Yeah. Did you want to give us a quick <laughs> background <laughs> on Yeah, sure. Um so Andrew, Andrew Plum, um, well, just uh, it's funny, our, our family seems to be getting more and more involved in the town. Uh, my my wife, Meta, is a part of the working group. Uh, my mother-in-law, who lives downstairs, is in a part of town meeting <laughs> for our district. Um, but uh, we heard from Claire that there was a potential opening on the board and we were talking about it. And um, I'm, I'm an architect and uh, a builder and a small scale developer. My wife and I have had a business together for 15 years. We live, we've been in Arlington for 20 years. Our kids are growing up here. We just, you know, it's like we love this place and um, are looking for ways to be more involved and more thinking about its future and use our skill set and experience, you know, in a way that benefits the town. And so I um, uh, had a meeting with, with Claire and, and was, I was just really interested in, in being a part of um, thinking about the future and the types of things that are, you know, always coming up in these things. So I'm no stranger to um, dealing with the, I work mostly in Cambridge, but on my projects, but dealing with the zoning boards and planning boards and, and so on. So um, it's interesting for me to potentially be on the other side of it. And, you know, um, uh, so I, I, anyway, what, what questions can I answer for you guys? Um, about me. Well, I, I'm excited to hear that um, you have some development yes. experience. I think that yes. that's some that's a question that comes up a lot from yeah. um, people who visit the board, the public, yeah. and then you know just thinking about economic feasibility yeah. and um, what are the considerations that yeah. um, create opportunities for development in yeah. town. So to me, that is something that, um, you know, Kin has some experience with that and brings a perspective, but to have, you know, additional perspective, I yeah. think to me is really interesting. Well, I, I mean, I, I didn't really know if I was allowed to ask questions or whatever in, the, in that presentation earlier yeah. or whatever, but I, it was interesting to look at those maps and think about 
but that that was you were saying it was a footprint was smaller than you expected but that's actually the maximum footprint right because that's three okay. family yes everywhere mm -hmm. and it will only get smaller as more things Correct. get more dense that's right and yeah. if you you mentioned about east arlington and infrastructure and you're not really going to get three family developments contributing much to infrastructure so if you want development to right. help drive infrastructure you need more density right. mm -hmm. because the projects you know i mean we're doing a lot of like three family scale and it's it's actually tough you know just if i had to, if i was needing to contribute to an infrastructure fund it probably wouldn't work or to pin, pin out it, it wouldn't it just wouldn't not yeah. not not the way things are right now unless the, unless the land is I, I don't know what these parcels would sell for but in cambridge like not so you know uh anyway but that, so thinking about what's feasible i mean i love the idea of being able to just do like missing middle scale housing mm -hmm. i mean yeah that's, I, all that's great right. um and but the if you're thinking about well what what else might the development give to the town like you need larger scale things yeah. to be mm -hmm. able to have the room for, for affordable housing and yeah. or if there's whatever yeah. if it's helping with inter infrastructure and stuff so right. Right. um anyway it's exciting it's exciting that this is this conversation is happening i mean yeah yeah you know, yeah it's really and yeah. and we want to go to town meeting in the fall with the proposals so yeah that's the that. right. Yes. So yeah. if you do, join, buckle up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's exciting, though. I think this is this brings to fruition a lot of things that um, the board has been interested in working on in terms yeah. of how to how to think more broadly about map changes and and putting together opportunities for yeah. um, uh, higher higher value uses for yeah. for some of the, the properties. You have questions for us? Um, I mean, I, I'm trying to get a sense of the purview and the, I, I was, I mean, I just, whatever, you just mentioned, hey, you can sit in today, so fine. So I'm trying, I'm trying to understand like what what the, what commentary you were looking for from the board and, and the relationship between this board and like the working group, for example. Yeah. And so I'm more than happy, I know that, Oh, that 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 means my battery dies, and, so. okay <laughs> and it means that we're also um, yeah. pretty pretty close pretty to so i'm more than happy you know yeah. i'm sure any yeah. member of the board would be more than happy to talk to you about purview and yeah. you know process etc um absolutely can make our results available um a couple of our members have to run to town meeting yeah. um but you know i i'm i i don't so i'm more than happy to say oh, that's that a little okay, bit great. as well thanks um but uh yeah, yeah. so we can pick that up Sounds good. Any Great. other items before we take a motion to adjourn to town meeting? No. No. All right. So moved. I'll second. second. We'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Ken. Yes. And then yes as well. We are adjourned.